and the two young pups were nice enough to give a few rides to the kids. Um, they got a little bit of their energy out, so they're a little bit more relaxed now. Um, so our kennel name is Granite Hill Chinooks. We are in Dover, New Hampshire, and we're probably one of the only breeders of the state dog in New Hampshire. Um, so what I'd like to do is give you a little bit, a little bit of understanding about what goes into dog sledding. Of course, you have the sled. Sleds me up with several parts that have a function. Brush bow, so you can go through bushes. Runners, so you stand on the sled back here, and the brake. Sleds made out of hardwood. Usually you'll find birch, and it's a wood that can be uh, bent, twisted if you boil it. And that's, that's the idea behind uh, the sled. It's very flexible. Um, this particular sled is a very small one. It's a kid's sled. We didn't bring the big sled today. It's a good thing because it wouldn't have made it around the corner. <laughs> so, what we've got here is a full size line. This line, right, this line is for six dollars. Give you an idea of what a six dog line looks like. The rear end of the line is made with what's called a shock cord because when they take off, it's, it's something to absorb the shock. And that's exactly what it does so that the sled doesn't go flying. And, and when they get pulled on, um, it's, it's a lot easier on them. Um, the musher actually is very involved in it. They help. We help. Because we're going to help them get started, we're going to run behind the sled, and when they need help going up hills or something, we're going to work for it. So it's a team. It's a whole team thing. It's not, not like they do all the work. Get her to keep still. She's got a harness. This is called an X-Pack. Because of the crosses here. Goes down under the chest, where it's padded. And... The two dogs are tied together. Keeps them together as a team, so they're not going in any direction. This is called a neckline, for that very reason. It's a neckline. The collars that they have are called limited slip, which means it moves with them. It'll get bigger and smaller as we need it. And the reason we do that is it keeps the dog from being choked. If one dog were to be a little faster than the other, it's gonna pull that dog along, but it's not gonna choke him or her. Right, Susie? <laughs> So if we were to pull these dogs out, you'll see that they are attached to the sled with a line. For today's demonstration, all we did was take two separate lines, two single lines, and put them together. Normally, they would have this whole setup right here, where you've got room for six dogs. The center line is called the gang line. And it's what everything is tied to. And it's also what's tied to the sled. These lines are called tug lines. These are what's attached to the dog. So if you can think of the two dogs attached to their loops with their neck lines. Okay. Back here, you've got a hook. And this is actually um, for the, the collars. It's where the, the, the next two dogs, this is where their lines would, would come together. So you've got two, four, and six all together. And if they work as a team, um, you go straight, or right, or left. Um, G and haw. G is right, haw is left. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Um, most modern day sleds, they used to be all wood, but most modern day sleds now have nylon underneath them. In fact, more modern would be aluminum with detachable nylon runners. And um, the professional mushers, those that do it for a business that have corporate sponsors and whatnot, make their life out of it, they have se several kinds of uh, nylon that slips on there. It depends on the snow. 
just like you would uh, adjust your skis if you were skiing. If you've got slushy, if you've got hard, you got you got puffy. They they do that. So at the during the Iditarod, you would see them changing. Well, you would see them changing runners depending on on the snow conditions. Um, Les and I don't do this for a living. We we have regular jobs. But what we do is we raise Chinooks because it's a rare breed and it's a breed that we um, we have fallen in love with. The dogs um, were originally from Tamworth, New Hampshire. A gentleman by the name of Arthur Walden in 1917 bred a dog and his dog, his, his favorite dog he called Chinook. Hence the name of the breed. The breed's uh, 2017 will be the 100th anniversary of Chinook being born and of the uh, the breed. We show our dogs in the United Kennel Club. Um, the reason that we do that is that we are more inclined to show the dog the dog's function over what we call fluff. <coughs> we, we, they're not a showy dog. We don't give them a bath to go to the show. They go to the show and the judge is looking at their function. Are their hips stretching? Are they doing what they're supposed to do? Does the dog look like he can pull a sled? That's what they're judging us on. They're not judging us on whether he's been quaffed and, uh, and and looks totally dignified in the show ring. They act up because they're 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 our pets, and that's what we that's why we breed them because of the the breed. Like I said, we fell in love with it. Um, we've been doing this. See, Kenny is nine, so almost ten. So about 2002, we got our first Chinook. Kenny's nine. 2001. She's she's my she's the club historian. <laughs> she feeds me the information. I couldn't do it without her. <laughs> so, um, what what happened was we we got Kenny and we realized very quickly that this is the the uh, best kept secret in all of the canine community. Um, the dogs make absolutely perfect pets. They're great with infants. They're great with um, um, any kind of lifestyle. We've, we've placed our dogs in New York City, where they live in a townhouse, do great. They are very adaptable, they're loyal, and they're incredibly intelligent. So you have to make sure you're one step ahead of them. Uh, but they're, they're just the, great, the greatest thing. Uh, what else would we say? Oh, can you tell us more about the breed? They're great. Yeah, they're, they're, just, they're just very, very good dogs. A lot of people don't know, but they're the snake dogs. Um, some kids from Ross Lurgio Middle School in Bedford, uh, their teacher, as a way to teach them civics, as a way to teach them history, state history, um, social science, um, um, critical reasoning skills, put together a bill to go before the Senate. And what they did was they, they did get a sponsor. Uh, um, Senator Roberge from Bedford sponsored them, and so it caught. So for a year, their whole education was based on this bill, but they fulfilled the requirements of, of the uh, state education. So what it came down to was them testifying in front of the Senate and in front of the House as to why we should have a state dog. And they did, they did a great job. Abby was the ambassador for the breed club. She's the only dog that they tell us on record that has ever been in the state house. So once we won over the governor's wife, it was all over. And um, she made her way through all the offices, through the house and the Senate. In fact, she fell asleep on the Senate floor. <laughs> she groaned because it was time to go out and she had everybody um, really, really happy. But she was our ambassador. She, she enjoyed it. Um, like I said, we're from Dover. Um, one thing about our, our kennel, we don't do it for a living. We do it for the love of the breed. Um, Les will do all the research on the couple that we want to breed. And if we can't improve the breed by a breeding, we don't do it. We absolutely don't do it. It would, it would be worthless. We're a young breed at this time. We're less than a thousand dogs in the world. So we, we have that capability of controlling our genetics. We, we can, we can un understand what dogs have the hip dysplasia, what dogs have are shy, we won't breed that. What dogs are aggressive, we won't breed that. 
because the Chinook is known for its gentle temperament. So uh, she'll do six months of research based on this, and we'll take a, we'll take a drive. We've driven to Ohio to get the right the right nail with our females. Um, so uh, so we do it for the love of the breed. We don't do it to make money, and 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 that's the uh, we think that's what makes a good breeder. Is it's it's not it doesn't have anything to do with us. It has everything to do with the dogs. Any questions about the Chinook or sledding or anything that I've said? How heavy are the sleds when you're pulling six dogs? Oh, it's a lot heavier than this one, but I can still pick it up. Yeah, it's very light. The wood's hard wood, but it's incredibly light. Because when you're when you are pulling six dogs, you've got a sled bag, and that's like the sled bag is full of gear. So when you're doing your training, you're gonna they're gonna pull chains. They're going to pull uh, free weights that you would use. To, they're going to pull some heavy stuff to get used to it. And that's how you get them in shape. you got to wait for the weather to cooperate, though. Typically, if the humidity and the temperature, when you add them up, is below 100 degrees, it's okay to train. So that's, that's, that's how we do that. I think we'll do a few more rides now. You want to do a couple of runs? Yeah, yeah I think they're going to be... <laughs> well, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your time.